God bless you everyone. My name is David Ewan and I head up the Bravehearted Ministry at the Resurrection Center and also Bravehearted Academy to the world. I welcome you to this program and I'll be talking about the reasons to pray for Israel. But first, let's talk a little bit about its history. Before Israel became a nation, the majority of people dwelling in the region were Palestinians. They were Arabs who lived in what was then known as Palestine. On May 14th in 1948, Israel was officially declared a state marking the first Jewish state in over 2000 years. The United Nations approved a plan to partition Palestine into a Jewish and Arab state in 1947, but the Arabs rejected it. In May 1948, Israel was officially declared an independent state with David Ben-Gurion, the head of the Jewish agency, as the prime minister. The United States was the first country to recognize Israel as a state in 1948 and the first to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel in 2017. Israel has long been and remains America's most reliable partner in the Middle East. As the Cold War dragged on, the U.S. came to view Israel as a key buffer against Soviet influence many years ago in the Middle East and supported it accordingly. The American-Israel alliance didn't really cement or solidify until around 1973 when American aid helped save Israel from a surprise Arab invasion. So I was 10 years old at the time. Israel is the only country in the world that has more trees today than it had 50 years ago. Israel has more museums per capita than any other country. There's a lot of culture. It includes the world's only one that's underwater. Voicemail technology was developed in Israel. The Israel Defense Forces, the IDF, is a leader in saving people trapped by natural and man-made disasters. Israel is a very reliable partner in our world community. The Trump administration at the White House has led to renewed warmth in the Israel-American relationships culminating in Trump's decision to formally recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital, and that was in 2017. If other government officials or Democratic Party end up becoming more willing to criticize the Israeli government, Israel may well end up as a partisan issue in America, which actually would threaten the foundation of the United States and Israeli relationship and alliance. This is what is also happening today. Israel also benefits about 8 billion US dollars of loan guarantees. Almost all US aid to Israel is now in the form of military assistance, while in the past it also received significant economic assistance. Israel is one of the United States' two original major non-NATO allies in the Middle East. Since the Cold War, Israel has become the linchpin of American Middle East strategy as Israel serves as an advantageous ally. So what are Israel and Palestine's up to? What's that all about? Why are they fighting? Well, let me give you a little bit of a background. Israeli Jews and Palestinian Arabs both want the same land and a compromise has proven difficult to find. Israel is the world's only Jewish state located just east of the Mediterranean Sea. Palestine's the Arab population that hails from the land Israel now controls refers to the territory as Palestine and want to establish a state by that name on or all part of that same land. The Israeli-Palestine conflict is about who gets what land and how it's controlled. That's what you've been hearing about in the news. In 
1967, the 1967 war is particularly important for today's conflict as it left Israel in control of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, two territories home to large Palestine populations. That's the issue. So uh, I'll say that again. It's, it's the West Bank and Gaza Strip, these two areas, they're two territories that are owned by Israel, uh, but they're home to large Palestine populations. So today, the West Bank is nominally controlled by the Palestine Authority and is under Israeli occupation. This comes in the form as, uh, of Israeli troops who enforce Israeli security restrictions on Palestine movement and activities and Israeli settlers, the Jews, who build over expanding communities in the West Bank that it effectively deny the land to the Palestines. So it's a fight on land. Gaza is controlled by Hamas, an Islamic fundamentalist party and is under Israeli blockade, but not ground troop occupation. Some predictors of future resolutions is the thought of going from a two state solution to a one state solution, wherein all of the land becomes either one big Israel or one big Palestine. Most observers think this would cause more problems than it would actually solve, but this outcome is becoming more likely over time for political and demographic reasons. So here's the reason why we all need to pray for and support Israel today. And it's related to history. It's also related to biblical reasons. Number one, God will bless those who bless Abraham's descendants and curse those who curse them. And that you'll read in the Bible. It's in Genesis chapter 12, verse two. The next one, number two, God instructs us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This is an instruction from God, and that's in Psalms chapter 122, verse 6. Number three, God's covenant with Israel is everlasting. This is the land for God, and that's in Genesis chapter 17, verse 7 and 19. The land of Israel belongs to God. That's in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 23 and Joel chapter two, verse 18. The next one, God gave his people the land of Israel as an external possession. That's in Genesis chapter 15, 17, verse seven through eight, Genesis chapter 48, verse four, and Psalms 105, chapter, uh, I should say chapter 105, verse seven through 11. And the next one, God's judgments on Israel at various times in her history do not void his covenant. So you see God is a God of order. You'll see that in Ezekiel 37. And God has not rejected Israel. We'll see that in Romans 9 through 11, chapters 9 through 11. So there's only one way for anyone, including Jewish people, to be reconciled to God. And you will see that in John chapter 14, verse six. And the last one, the gospel is for the Jewish people first. And that's in Romans chapter one, verse 16. So I was talking today about the reasons to pray. And um, very soon uh, we'll be praying at the Resurrection Center um, we've done it before. We're going to do it uh, tonight. We'll be doing it on other days. We are praying for Israel. We are praying that Israel remains the country that it is today and continues to grow. Uh, it is a strong ally to the United States. Um, it provides a, a, a friend to the Middle East territory. Um, Israel is very important to the United States. It's also important to the Christian community, um, as shown in the Bible. I've just shared a lot of scripture with you. Thank you for joining me. My name is David Ewan, heading up the Bravehearted Ministry at the Resurrection Center and Bravehearted Academy to the Nations. This is the Resurrection Center. <laughs>